And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Steampunk Rally Fusion. Now this is a standalone sequel slash expansion to Steampunk Rally. I never played Steampunk Rally, which is, I don't know why it didn't happen. Roxley, great company, I just never got around to playing it. Well, I have now, I played this one. It's essentially very similar to the original one, it just adds more stuff, uh, a lot more stuff. I wanna say double. The box is twice the size for sure. This is a racing game in which you have a giant machine, a steampunk machine, and you are a famous person like Tesla or Curie or Einstein, and you build this weird contraption and you're racing everybody else. It's all about using this contraption and using dice. The dice stand for elements like electricity and fire and steam, and you put those in your machine, pop out other things, and hopefully be the first one to the finish line. Here's a little bit of how it plays. In this game, you're gonna set up a track and there's multiple sides here. Um, we have the Mars side, and then here's the Machu Picchu side. And each side will come with kind of a deck of cards. This is for the Mars side. That will be drawn at various points to do events and things like that. Players are going to pick one of many, many different inventors in the game, take their piece, put on start. And the goal of the game is, as soon as one player crosses the finish line, whoever's the farthest along the track is the winner. This is done by building machines. Everyone's going to start with two cards. So if I'm Elijah McCoy, maybe I have these two cards, and you have to have them connected. There are these sockets on the side where you'll connect the different cards together. And so you're going to start with two, but you're going to get more of these over the course of the game. So here's a couple, uh, just the different ones. And like I said, this game comes with many, many different ones. Some of them have special abilities and special rules, but I'm just going to show you some basic stuff. There are four different decks of cards, and in each round of the game, players are going to draw one card from the deck of each of them. You're going to look at these cards, you're going to pick a card, keep that card in front of you, and then pass the rest to the next player. You'll get three from a player and do the same thing. When you take a card, you can do three things with it. Well, really two things. You can always discard it at the top to take the resources. So this will give me two yellow dice, or two cogs, two blue dice, two cogs, two red dice, two cogs, or a die of the color of my choice. Each of these dice stands for a different kind of power. Or I can attach it to my machine. As long as I have room to attach it to my machine, I can put this card as a new piece of my great amazing vehicle. Or in the case of what the last deck, which is here the difference engine, you can stick these cards aside to be able to be played on a future turn. This one's pretty simple, it's just going to give me four gears, but there's all kinds of crazy kind of things that it will let you do, special events and things like that. You're going to be keeping track of your damage over the course of the game. There's different terrain. A lot of the terrain in the game will cause you damage if you end on it. And when you take damage, if you haven't gotten shielding, um, the more damage you have, you're going to lose cards from your machine. Now, you're never going to lose everything. You'll have your basic stuff, but you'll lose the new cards that you've built. In between, after everyone has done drafting, everyone's going to run their machines. And you'll have some, hopefully, dice that you have in a pool. You uh, will then, kind of simultaneously, everyone's gonna just be running their machines. Now, some machines have light bulb pieces on them. Everyone has a starting piece with that, and you can always use those. You just flip this over to show that you use that. So this one says, for example, I can take kind of a defense, which I will do, or I could take a blue die or a red die. So let's say I take some defense. Over here, the sale says I can move two spaces, but I'll take one damage. Well, these will cancel each other out, so then I can use both of those. Everything else, you're going to just have to figure it out here. Um, this says I get to draw cards when I sell a drafted card, and if I do so, I get a gear. These spots, though, are spots to place dice. So let's say I've actually drafted some blue dice. At the beginning of the round, I'm going to roll these. So I have a two three, four, and five. Now gears are handy because they let me re-roll or add or subtract from the pips on dice. But I might say I'm gonna stick this four and this five in these slots. That's a total of nine. You'll notice next to it there's three, so I divide nine by three. 
and that lets me move three. I might stick this one die here, two divided by two, and that lets me move one. So I'm gonna be able to move a lot this turn, but I also might take damage and my ship might break up. There are dice, there are cards that do all sorts of things. I could spend all day talking about the cards, but there's not that many symbols. Many of them, like here, for example, you divide the yellow dice by five to move two and get a red die back. There are conversion dice, like this boiler. I'll divide all the red dice I put here by two and get that many blue dice. Same thing here, I can put three red dice and a blue dice, divide them by five to get blue dice and a fusion die. Fusion die is really powerful, it can go up to nine, but the disadvantage is a fusion die will never come off. And this matters because as we're talking about this, as you put dice on cards, you are not able to remove them except to vent or if a special ability lets you do it. Each round before the race, you can spend these gears to slowly reduce the pips on your dice. And when your pips are completely gone, you'll be able to remove those dice, which means you can put more dice in there. And it's a good focus point of the game. While these cool fusion dice are huge, but if you put them in a spot, they're never gonna be able to be vented. So that's pretty much the game. Like I said, you're zooming around the racetrack, trying to be the first one to the end, building your machine, drafting cards, and there's a lot of different symbols and things in the game. I do wanna mention there's also secret projects. Everyone gets two secret projects at the beginning, and you get to keep one, and you're gonna be moving this along, trying to complete your secret project. You do that every time you have a run of dice, you can spend them. So here I have a five and a six, I can spend them to move my secret project project up by two. And once your secret project gets to these colors here, at any point you can reveal it and do whatever it says, but it's once per game. You might want to wait to get to the final thing here. The 12 here gives me seven armor and four blue dice. But it takes a while to get there and the race isn't that long, so maybe by the time I get to eight, I'm like, you know what? I'm happy with five shielding and three dice. So you have these different secret projects that are gonna do various things. This one gives a bunch of gears. This one gives you uh, smooth movement, which lets you ignore terrain, which is pretty awesome. This one gives fusion dice and gears. This one gives gears and red dice, smooth movement and yellow dice. You know, so there's all sorts of different things. The game comes with a whole pile of boards and there is a lot of symbols and stuff on the different boards like, woo, this is neat. I got, you know, you have enough to make a normal racetrack. You don't have to play with the special racetracks. Um, but the, the course itself is really secondary. What really matters are these different pieces here. I mean, and look at all these different cool things. And it's fun to see them put together. The symbology at first I thought was possibly a little overwhelming, but it's not too bad. And everyone does get a card that shows them this is how you play. We draft, we vent, we race, we damage, upkeep. And then here are the different things. And there's a few things that are not on here, but for the most part, they're pretty easy to understand. I really like, like I said, there are so many different starting people that come with us, and that's not even counting promos and stuff. But, you know, we got Nikola Tesla and Miss Lovelace, and, you know, each one has kind of their own special thing that they can do. Some of them have, you know, rules that explain what they can do on their turn. But for the most part, I mean, you can pick amongst all these different people. You're never going to run out of options in this game. I'm never going to see all the different things. Now, the most exciting part about this game is this plethora of dice. The dice are really good quality. I have these upgraded metal gears, which are amazing, but I think they're just tokens in the, in, in the normal version. But I love these dice. Easy to tell apart, the red, yellow, and blue. And then having those cool big fusion dice. Ah, they, just, they just look amazing, and they're cool. Maybe the weakest part of the game is the actual racers themselves, uh, which are just a token and a plastic stand, but the game isn't really about the race, it's about the card machine you're building, and that part is awesome! I also want to mention this is a really great, I really like this plastic insert, it holds everything very well, and the game comes with a very comprehensive and easy to understand rule book. Now, this box, I think, if you've never played Steampunk Rally before, 
I almost think I might push you towards getting the first one because this is overwhelming. There's so much stuff in here and there's so much to play a normal racetrack. Forget those event cards. They're interesting. Forget the artifacts you can put on Mars that do different things when you land on them. Uh, there's just a lot going on and you'd be like, Wah. it's not a complicated game, but there's so much extra stuff and so much when you first get into it you're going to have a different character every time. And you play these characters, and you start with a basic machine, and you're adding to that. So that's enough to keep you occupied for a while. Then you can add in the other stuff. You can ignore the fusion dice, for example, because there's a lot going on, and some of it's not intuitive if you've not seen it before, like the venting. Venting isn't particularly intuitive. You're like, well, I'm spending cogs to slowly reduce pips on dice. Yeah, so you can pull them off to put more dice on. Each dice that you, you don't use each turn, they're going to go away, so you got to figure out how to use them. There are cards that let you store dice for future turns, but it's tricky. There's a lot going on. And so when you get this handful of cards to draft, you look at it and say, all right, at the beginning you have all four, but after that you're going to get whatever they drafted to you. So the bronze card is ways to transform dice into other dice, but also it has four connections on the side. If I take a bunch of cards with only one connection, I'm going to shut my machine down. I'm not going to even be able to add more to it. Or the special card, which lets me do crazy things. There's one special card that lets you add another pilot in. So you can go through the deck of, of pilots that haven't been used, and I might have Thomas Edison as my driver, and now a Tesla shows up. <laughs> Never would happen, but that's just fun to think about. Or uh, do I want the gold ones, which give me more movement, or the silver ones? And, and so you're sitting there and trying to figure all this stuff out, and there's a lot to think about. You're not particularly caring what the other players are doing, except for, oh, you move three spaces, I move two. So keep that in mind that even though it's a race, the interaction between players is not tremendously high, other than drafting cards. But very rarely do I think, I don't want to give you that card. I'm thinking, what card do I want to use? And the only time... If I don't want to use any of the cards, and I'm just going to discard one to get resources, more dice or gears, that's when I might look at your machine. But once the, the process, and everyone's running their machines, rolling dice and moving dice back and forth, it's kind of, it's a little solitary in that regard. And then, oh, you move four spaces and I move three. But that doesn't make me dislike the game. I do enjoy this game. I'm a big fan of a big machine. You saw the one at the very beginning I made this big machine. I, I've never made one that big in the game. But it's just fun to mail this machine and you look at it like, that is my weird, crazy, funky steam park machine. But that's one part, the visual aspect of it. The other part is, okay, I'm going to use this to turn one red die into three blue dice. And I'm going to use them to do this. And I'm going to use these dice to get more of those gear tokens so I can vent those blue dice out so I can run it all over again. Or you know what? It's just getting to be too unwieldy. I'm about to take some damage anyway. I'm blowing up all this part of my vehicle and I'll rebuild it with new cards that I can fill with dice on a future turn. Now the fusion dice does offer more options because they can be really huge numbers, but also they're permanent. Um, but they're also wild. So you know they have the good effects and bad effects. When to use your special cards, you know, when to try to use that smooth movement to ignore terrain. There's a lot of things to think about. It's a thinky game, but not overly so, and it has the fun of a racing game. There's really nothing on the market like this one. This is a racing game that's more about building an engine, literally and figuratively, to get around the track as fast as you can. I really enjoy it. I love the huge amount of options that are in here, keeping in mind that I still think it's better to probably get just the base set and run from there but I'm never gonna get bored with this particular racing set. So that's Steampunk Rally Fusion. Check it out. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.